questions have been asked Vice President Gacy. Uh, if he would present the presentation that you have at your place for the board members, it's the FY 2015 fee proposal. Good evening, everybody. Uh, we're here tonight uh, to talk about uh, tuition and fees and uh, our, our most recent uh, proposal for the college. Uh, we're, we're asked this every year, so we might as well just come out and ask the question, uh, why, why do we need a, a tuition and fee increase? And so I'd like to just uh, uh, recap for everybody uh, some of the assumptions that we've been using in our financial planning uh, and, uh, and a little bit of update. And uh, later on in the presentation, I'll talk uh, just a little bit about uh, some things that are still outstanding uh, out there. First of all, what's been going on in Lake County is we've had uh, declining property values, and, and when you have declining property values, you have declining property taxes. We are tax capped. Uh, it does allow for a little bit of money every year uh, up to the rate of inflation, or 5%, whichever uh, is less. Uh, but what we found over time is what drive, has driven that number mostly for uh, the College of Lake County is new property. We've had some years over a billion dollars in new property uh, that we've been able to tax. That has now dropped to $50 million. Uh, on an annual basis. So we just don't get the increases in property taxes uh, that we once got, or once received. We also uh, uh, have had some challenges with tuition. Uh, uh, our enrollment uh, did hit a peak in 2010 uh, as uh, we hit the peak of the recession, uh, very common amongst community colleges, uh, but has since leveled off and, uh, and even uh, fallen uh, since then. Uh, at the time of the financial retreat, uh, we had been projecting a 2% enrollment drop. Uh, we had the same experience as other community colleges, and uh, actually not quite as bad as across the state, but uh, experienced a 5% drop. So that has caused us to, to reevaluate our assumption uh, there. We projected flat state funding. Uh, that's so far the news that we have out of the state. Uh, that is certainly no guarantee. Uh, and then we also budgeted our biggest expense at the, at the, at the college, that 60% uh, our salaries, and we budgeted a 2.5% salary increase for all of our employee groups. And then finally, on all of the non-personnel uh, items other than uh, health care, uh, we had uh, no increase budgeted, uh, so we've absorbed any inf inflationary increase. In fact, we haven't had an increase there for four years. On the healthcare side, uh, we projected uh, that that would be up uh, uh, by 8%. We do 8% every year. Uh, I am expecting that number to, uh, to be better this year. So we looked at some tuition options. Uh, we originally showed uh, the board uh, uh, what it would take uh, to balance the budget, uh, structurally balanced budget, uh, in fiscal year 15 and fiscal year 16. Uh, and it would be $9 and $10 or $19 over, over two years. Even with that, with the enrollment drop, we would still have to do a half million dollar reduction uh, to the budget. Uh, we are recommending today uh, that we uh, uh, not just do one year's tuition increase, that we do two years, uh, and that we do $6 uh, for this year and $8 uh, for the coming year. And that would result, uh, as uh, Chairman Holland said earlier, a $1.3 million uh, base uh, uh, budget reduction um, out of our projections uh, for fiscal year 15 and a $1 million reduction for fiscal year 16. Uh, and just so that you can see uh, what, the, uh, what the impact of uh, a much more drastic uh, reductions in our tuition, we went all the way down and looked at what a $0 increase would mean, and, and we would have to cut almost $6 million uh, out of our budget. It's, uh, it's fair to say uh, these may, uh, uh, in a $100 million budget, uh, may not seem like uh, very large numbers, but we have a lot of fixed costs at the college. Uh, uh, we have to still teach our, our, our faculty. We still have to have rooms uh, for, for them uh, to be in. Uh, there are ways that we look uh, uh, to examine our costs, but, but there are some that, uh, that, that just have to be funded in the coming year. So on the tuition options, uh, you can see the, the six and the eight dollars. Uh, that uh, represents a 6.8 percent increase. And over the last four years, over the last two years, and the and the coming two years, that would uh, work out to about 3.1 percent per year. And then on our fee options, uh, uh, we did uh, originally recommend a four dollar uh, increase. Uh, we're now recommending a a, a three dollar increase. Uh, and that uh, uh, those would work out to 3.6% and a 2.7% increase. 
So what's the impact of this? Uh, a $2.3 million cut uh, from our projections uh, over the next uh, two years. Uh, we are going to have to look uh, all through the budget. Uh, still outstanding, though, is uh, what is going to happen with our, our contractual increases uh, for our, uh, bargaining, our bargaining units. Our two largest bargaining units, we're in the midst of negotiating right now. Uh, that's our faculty and our facilities unions. Uh, we are still waiting to finalize our health care number. Um, uh, everyone is having a very good experience uh, with that. I, I'm expecting uh, the same there. Uh, I'm not expecting new news on state aid. Uh, however, I'm not uh, going to be surprised at uh, uh, something coming out of Springfield uh, uh, as, a, as the election approaches or shortly after the election. And then finally, since we're now looking at two years, even though fiscal year 15, we are not going to uh, see any changes in our property tax uh, projections, uh, uh, we do have to keep an eye out for fiscal year 2016. Uh, and those will be driven again by new property numbers as well as uh, what the rate of inflation is. Uh, we do expect that we'll be uh, looking at all uh, parts of our budget uh, 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 top down, uh, uh, looking where we're going uh, to focus on expenditures. Uh, and we'll be looking at everything uh, uh, from contractual items uh, to travel. Uh, and it is uh, possible, uh, although we have to do our best not to have uh, any service reductions uh, to our students. Uh, and certainly uh, do our best not to impact the classroom. I'm always asked, uh, how are we stacking up uh, with our peers? So uh, with the recommendation we have today, it uh, would be a total of a, uh, of a $9 increase, $6 tuition, and $3 fee. Uh, it would put us in fourth place, uh, right about uh, the middle, uh, at $121. Our average uh, tuition of our peers is $120.42. Uh, we are the last uh, to approve these, so last we talked to you, all of these, uh, uh, many of these were still proposed, so uh, we now have the final numbers from all of our peers. And uh, we also took a look at, and I uh, searched around and talked to all, all of my other uh, fellow uh, uh, vice presidents to see if any of them had been doing multi-year uh, tuition increases, in it, and it appears a number of them had been. Uh, Triton uh, has done uh, $25 over five years. They did just a flat $5 in, uh, for each of five years. Uh, Moraine, Moraine Valley did $5, uh, but just over three years. Uh, they're coming off the very end of that. And Oakland just approved an $8 increase uh, for each of the next two years. Uh, we would still like to think that even with this increase that uh, College of Lake County uh, is going to be extremely affordable. You can see that uh, our total cost to our students, this is what 30 credit hours, uh, would be $3,630. Uh, it's uh, uh, just a little bit above what our peer average would be. Uh, but you can see the lowest uh, four-year university is uh, almost double the cost uh, in Illinois. And uh, if you uh, went to the exact same uh, courses at the University of Illinois, it would cost you five times as much. So what is a, a dollar impact on our students? Uh, uh, just by calculating out the, the 30 hours, uh, just for the tuition, uh, that is uh, uh, gonna cost $270 more next year, and in fiscal year 2016, it would cost an additional $240. Uh, we pride ourselves on helping our students as much as we can with student assistance. Uh, obviously, we do our best uh, to get our students to apply for financial aid. 24% uh, of our students receive some form of uh, financial aid at the college. 18% uh, of them are federal and 6% are state. 83% uh, of our students who receive financial aid have the entire tab of their tuition and fees uh, uh, covered by their grant. Uh, we are expecting the Pell Grant to increase by $40 a semester uh, next year. Uh, and as well, we've had a great response from all levels of government on our veterans. Uh, we now have 202 veterans that are receiving an annual award of, uh, of approximately $1,820. Uh, we still have a robust scholarship program and, and getting better. Uh, we had, uh, uh, last year we had 383 students re uh, receive a total of $700,000. And, uh, and we should never forget that we work very hard to provide employment on campus uh, for our students, uh, which uh, is, uh, uh, we always hear how much uh, they appreciate that our students do. We have 109 federal work study students uh, uh, averaging $1,595. That depends on a federal appropriation, uh, the amount that we can get there. And then uh, locally funded what uh, individual departments, say my grounds department, uh, uh, asked to have a number of students that we can afford in the budget every year. Uh, we have about 200 students working that average about $3,700 uh, a year. 
Uh, I had some other issues that have been raised uh, over the last uh, six weeks. Uh, one of them, uh, someone wanted to know uh, whether uh, the proposed increase was going uh, uh, for this year was going towards any construction. Uh, the uh, answer to that uh, is no uh, for this year. Uh, for next year, we will start to see some expenditures coming in uh, from the master plan. I am expecting a little bit more uh, electricity costs, uh, 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 um, some expenditures that are going to be related to the new science building uh, as it comes online. Uh, if you recall, we created a, a new $3 fee uh, to help support our, our uh, bond issues uh, that, uh, that we successfully uh, uh, sold in the last, uh, last two years. So that, those were the only direct uh, uh, things that were related to the construction. So in conclusion, uh, uh, what we are proposing uh, tonight is a $6 uh, tuition increase and a $3 fee increase, uh, that $3 uh, for just for investments for student success. Uh, uh, and with that, over the next two years, uh, we promise to deliver a structurally balanced budget uh, that will be $2.3 million less uh, than what we had projected would be over the next two years. Uh, this is going to involve a reduction of uh, expenditures. Uh, uh, we will have uh, uh, stay, uh, keep our focus on our students uh, and still keep investing uh, in things that we know uh, help them to be successful and all that uh, what uh, we consider to be a moderate cost that is at the middle of our peers. And I'll take any questions. David, did the student Uh, it's being broken out into two pieces in your board packet tonight, uh, $2.50 for uh, student success initiatives and $0.50 cents, uh, uh, to help with the student activity fee uh, because we have not uh, in some time been able to cover all of our expenditures in the, in the student activity fund. David, on the slide three, uh, the fourth action, Fourth option. Uh, I'm just looking at those numbers there, comparing it with the numbers that we were given three days ago, uh, and they were all uh, it was at a zero for FY15 and zero for FY16. Uh, however, this shows two dollars, and then this the budget impact and the total impact are the same. Well. Uh I, I'm not sure exactly what was sent to you three days ago, but what, what I've always been modeling is uh, uh, coming off the current amount. Uh, is that off the update? We were just got this three days ago. On the board update, I'm right. It may have been a, it may have been a typo, but I have it right here if you want to look at it. Well, I, I just uh, I know that I've been modeling a, a three dollar reduction uh, as we went down. Because uh, everything else on here is the same except for that last comment. <coughs> I apologize. I, I, Well, the amount would be uh, 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 what we modeled was doing it, a zero dollar increase in fifteen and two dollars in sixteen, and it would result in a cumulative cut of five point nine million dollars. David, I have your own kind of concern about if there is a tuition increase um, that's passed tonight, how the education campaign is going to develop to let the students know about this um, because we're talking about having this uh, have effect starting in the fall, correct? Not the summer, but the fall, That's correct? correct. That's correct. And um, I guess also kind of like a, a concern, or I don't know, um, that this is going to be for two years, so then you have the opportunity to let everybody know what's going to happen for the next two years, but um, I'm kind of also thinking that <laughs> I know when we discussed this at the February meeting and it was a higher figure, um, <coughs> we were 
all having, and maybe I'm speaking for everybody if I say sticker shock, but we were having a reaction that we wanted to come back with lower amounts. And and even though we done, had this talked about or presented to us as a financial retreat, I guess I'm getting back at it. I, I wish there was more time to digest this, and I wish there was, and I'm tying it into the education for the students, I wish there would have been an opportunity to let the students know earlier too. I mean, to have like a forum or something, like let the students know that this is coming down the pipe and we want to hear from you, we want to hear your concerns, and we want to let you know too why we think we need to do this. And I'm just, it didn't happen that way, and I'm just wondering if that's feasible to, to do something like that. Well, I'm talking about two different things, as you can tell. <coughs> we have is we've got to deal with the education of the students and letting them know what's going on and how that can take place. And then I'm saying, in the future, can't we um, get more input, have more time for these kind of decisions? This is about as big as it gets for the students, I think. Even though what I was shocked at the number that you tell us, 83% are completely covered by financial aid, but not all that financial aid is free. I mean, I'm sure some of it is well, right? Yeah. So uh, there are uh, two things that drive uh, our timing here. Uh, one is uh, about uh, January 15th, between January 15th and 20th, is when uh, the federal government releases the inflation rate. And that drives our property tax, uh, which drives uh, everything uh, that we do uh, in terms of uh, doing a, a revenue estimate. Uh, so I'm very leery about getting out ahead of uh, that January date. Uh, that, that allows uh, uh, really Andy and his staff and, and me to some extent. Uh, it gives us uh, less than two weeks to, to get everything uh, together before the, we always have the financial retreat the first week of, of February. One other thing that we've always debated uh, since I've been here is should we go talk to the students before we talk to the board? We've always fallen back on that we don't want to get out ahead of the board, um, that we want to be as thorough as, as we can at the financial retreat, get feedback from the board at that time, uh, and, uh, and then if we need to change the, the increase, then we can start working with the students uh, right away. Uh, I know uh, it hasn't quite worked out uh, that way uh, this year um, uh, because, uh, because of how everything uh, rolled out, but, uh, but, but I agree, the more time we can get to in front of the students and, and more time that they have to not just process it, but just as you suggested, if they choose in that year to do a forum or, or get feedback, uh, uh, we would more than welcome that. First of all, thank you for following up on the suggestions that we asked you, President Weber, to follow up with in the last meeting. So thank you for giving us the options here. This is things to really look at. Like, so I appreciate that and your attention to the detail. I'd also like to make the suggestion that when you mentioned modeling, this would probably be a good model for the financial retreat, the original meeting, which was February. Uh, so just food for thought for you, because I think this gives us some things to, to really think about with the options. That's, That's a good suggestion. Yeah. And we talked talk about that as well, that uh, at, at the next retreat, we'll definitely show what the impact uh, of various different uh, levels yeah. of tuition are. <laughs> we get into the even more deeper things, but it's a good model. David, what I'm, what I'm troubled with is last month when uh, <laughs> The increase was brought to us uh, uh, through all the recommending a $13 uh, total increase. And so we said, hey, go back to the drawing board. Uh, let's see what we can do. Oh my gosh, now you come back with a $17 increase. Uh, so we've gone from $14 last month to $17 uh, this month, uh, spreading out to two years. Uh, it's just not quite making sense to me saying that the discussion that we had and what we asked for them and asked you to come back uh, it's kind of like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to ask you to go back again. It's going to be 20 bucks or, you know, uh, I'm troubled by all of this. Did, did you put uh, 11, page 11 back up there? I mean, this is a very telling page that uh, the work that this board of trustees does when it goes to Springfield, goes to Washington, D.C. I mean, 
mean, this is what we do when we're there. We're constantly talking about increasing the Pell Grants, and you know, item three there is Pell Grants will increase by $40 per semester next year. 83% of, of those students receiving financial aid get up to cover tuition and fees. 18% of our students get federal aid, 6% get uh, state aid, 202 veterans receive an annual award of $1,800. The scholarships that we work hard on here at the college, the student employment, as you mentioned, um, this is what we do. This is what the Board of Trustees does. And we take time out of our busy schedules, time away from our families, and work to go do this stuff. And I'm glad you can put this together and put it up there so that the public gets to see what the Board of Trustees does and, uh, and the administrators that go to some of these places and work with us. It's uh, very important. Um, you made a good case, David, and I appreciate uh, all the information you gave us. Thank you. Yeah, and just as follow up to the beginning of the evidence you that, right? So you spend time and effort. And by my calculation, we get about $12 million directly to the federal government, thereabouts, that comes in each year. Higher. It's actually right there. Here. How is close to 20 million? Or 20 million. What is the total? The is uh, Delpo, I think. That's just how. Yeah, it's the total. Okay, that's the total. Okay, the total. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. And that's what we talked about with the uh, Congressman and his son. Okay. Okay. Okay.
disruptions that will have an impact on the budget, or in thousands would you see right now, approximately. So if we look at, um, this is my last question, if we look at the third slide, and if we look at number two, we're looking at the, uh, the one that is recommended by the staff as far as uh, the tuition increase. This total impact of $2.3 million is what I'm referring to, right? And that $2.3 million. If we were, if this digital disruption happened faster, that $400,000 would really kind of be 2.7. I mean, just. Yeah, I, I have to find another $400,000. Right. Okay. All right. So then my question is um, of this $2.3 million that we're going to have to find, that's, that is. Approach. I, yes. I, I much prefer to take the, the surgical approach. Uh, to me, though, I'd like to speak of it in terms of uh, the, the college being strategic and how we approach these things. Uh, uh, whether there are ways that we can uh, infuse technology, we're looking at uh, operations uh, like a bookstore, um, uh, looking at simple things like uh, why we have certain hours of the days of certain offices uh, uh, where we may have some opportunities for attrition. So uh, we're going to look at everything uh, as part of uh, this process. Uh, the college just, uh, uses a very good collaborative process, uh, both in the way we request funds uh, and in the way we make uh, decisions about what we recommend to you, and I expect we'll do that uh, as well. Um, just to piggyback on that idea, if we're um, strategically looking at ways to cut costs in college and be strategic and tactical and not completely British, um, I think that uh, there could be potentially some like, opportunities for revenue. The bookstore could potentially go away. Is there any revenue generating opportunities that the college can engage in? Uh, th there are uh, always, there's a myriad of things that uh, uh, Andy and I will muse about, uh, a number of them uh, uh, that, that could be done from uh, parking meters to uh, uh, a number of things other colleges do, <coughs> such as uh, 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 we are not, uh, and this college culturally has chosen, and I think rightly has chosen, not to go down the nickel and dime fee route. Uh, there are people who charge for graduation, there are people who charge for cap and gowns, uh, they charge to apply, they charge to drop a class. Uh, um, uh, what I usually find uh, is the amount of time you spend uh, chasing after those, uh, those pennies uh, don't always uh, uh, make it worth the while. Like usually you'll have to hire people just to uh, do those kinds of uh, collections. So there are other opportunities that have been presented and floated around throughout community colleges, like advertising on websites. Uh, it's another thing I don't personally like uh, because I don't want our website to be associated with some bizarre ad out there. But but Evelyn may feel differently about that if she wants to go sell up space. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm fine with that. But uh, uh, Google's doing it for us anyway uh, when people are are searching for us. So. We do look at uh, things like that. Um, uh, I think where our efforts are spent best is optimizing the revenue that we're getting in now. Uh, so we monitor things uh, like tax increment financing districts. Uh, we pay uh, very close attention now to our loss and collections, uh, following up on uh, and getting uh, very granular on our individual accounts. Uh, and I also uh, am very hopeful of that our student uh, I know you hear this a lot uh, in the uh, out in the in the world that oh if you invest this you'll make money uh, that doesn't happen in government but I I have seen research that the things that Dr Haney is proposing has led to more retention which leads to more money uh, so I think that that's the way to go uh, long term uh, for the college to keep tuition down uh, and as we shift to more towards those student success initiatives uh, I, I do think we will see a payoff. That is an excellent um, just finally, the <laughs> um, CPI for January 2014, do you have any idea what the number is? No, and the, and the board should know, uh, you may even hear like an inflation rate of 6% announced in the papers. <laughs> 
that that is not uh, the inflation rate uh, that uh, that uh, uh, for some reason the state of Illinois is driving its property taxes with. It, it has you go December over December. So whatever the change is from December the prior year to the December that was announced this year, that's your rate of inflation. Uh, very rarely, but in the last two years, it has been almost equal to the national uh, CPI year. Uh, but I've also seen years where inflation has been five, six, seven percent, but that December over December uh, a rate change has only been two percent. I don't know why they constructed the property tax law that way, but, but that's what we have to look at. Thank you, Thank you, David. I know Oh, no, no. Five days. So I appreciate all the detail and all the time, and you answered all of our questions and responded right away when you were sending emails back. I'm only scared when you don't ask questions. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, just, just adding on to some of the questions, and I don't know if President Paul said in Rich Solar. I think we do have some opportunities uh, with the OER technology, the Open Educational Resources lower students cost. And I talked to the Student Government Association, I had a chance to do that last week, and mentioned uh, that idea. And I think some of our faculty were excited about it in the first semester uh, this spring. So I think that gives us one of the best long range possibilities to use what is disruptive technology, sort of in the favor of our students, quite frankly. And uh, uh, I'll just say uh, thank you for the board for this good, healthy discussion of uh, in, in my uh, 20 years in senior management, I've uh, never seen a board that said uh, that didn't struggle with tuition, but 